Hey people, it's Larry again. Looks like it's time for a little winter update on this heating system that I came up with. I, I'm guessing I, m I must have sparked some interest because uh, there's people apparently building these or variants of this design and I'm getting a lot of questions again <laughs> as always by uh, private message instead of in comments. Um, first off, I'm going to say that, you know, I didn't go into this with any kind of a scientific plan in mind. All I did is go into this by uh, first searching on the internet, you know, for concepts that work, things that don't work, and such. Uh, this is actually all, nothing more than a big experiment, and I guess I got lucky because, like I said, I'm not a scientist or anything. I didn't go into this with a scientific plan, you know, it just worked. Uh, but I have, there's a few questions that I'm going to answer here, and hopefully I won't forget any of them. Um, one question was about this uh, play sand that I filled you know, the enclosure for the barrel stove in, uh, why I chose play sand. No, it's not any kind of a thermal mass. There's equally, well, I shouldn't say equally. There's about, uh, when you look at how much sand is in there and how much void space there is between each grain, there's probably about 30% air in there. So it's an insulator, actually. It's not a great insulator, but it's an insulator. And the reason it's there is so heat that comes out of the stove doesn't have a chance to escape upward it has to go into this copper coil that is wrapped around the stove uh, that's to preheat this water and antifreeze mixture that's in this barrel and then as the water comes through there preheated it goes into this water jacket heat exchanger on the chimney and it captures even more heat like I said, it's not a thermal mass, it's just uh, an insulator to force heat, as much heat as possible, into the water. I probably could have used vermiculite, but hey, I already had play sand, so I figured I'd dump that in there instead. Um, another question was, why don't I just pump the fish tank water through this? You can't. You will poison your fish. Uh, you have to heat some type of mixture, whether it's water alone or water and glycol or water and antifreeze or just straight glycol, straight antifreeze. Either way, you have to heat that and then slowly rob the heat off of that. And the key there is slowly rob the heat off of there to go into your fish tank. In this case, as I said before in previous videos, that in the top of here, you know, this line right here is the water coming in from my fish tank. It goes into a coil of corrugated stainless steel tubing, what you use on gas lines in a house, that sits just in the top of this. Uh, the coil is only about a foot long and a foot in diameter, and it just sits in the very top of this. So as the heat, the heated antifreeze and water comes back in the bottom here, it rises up through that coil of stainless steel tubing which has the antifreeze or the fish tank water pumping through it then comes back through here into the fish tank enters at the bottom of the fish tank so that heat also rises and helps you know heat the entire tank um, on mine here there was an addition that I put on here a few months ago I put another thermostat on here and luckily I found one of these El Cheapo ones that reads in Fahrenheit instead of Celsius this time. But there's a temperature sensor coming off of this. You can see this little tiny black wire here that dips down about a foot into the top of the fish tank and reads the temperature in there. That controls this underground sprinkler valve. And this is just a little one inch one with an 18 volt transformer on it. And what that does is when my water temperature over here finally reaches 68 degrees, that valve shuts off. It stops circulating the water through that, that barrel. 
the reason being I'm growing trout in my system instead of tilapia and you don't want the water that hot if you get it up to 78 degrees which is what tilapia favor the trout are going to freak out they're going to stop eating and they're going to sink down to the bottom and once that drops down below 68 degrees again it opens that valve back up and we start heating the water um, Let's see, another thing, uh, yeah, this white dryer mint tube that I have, this actually goes outside. So what's feeding the fire is fresh air from outside rather than if I'm building up heat in my little grow area out here, I'm not robbing the heat out of here to feed my fire and shove it back out the chimney. Um, that's a, a real necessity because uh, we've had temperatures out here in the past month that have dipped down to 20 below zero at night and luckily if I don't know if you can see this maybe guess not well my temperatures out here never drop below 60 you know 60 degrees they always hang around 65 66 uh, and the water in the fish tank and the sump and the water and antifreeze mixture in this barrel if I run this stove for about three or four hours a day that's generally enough to give me enough heat to to last until the next morning and like I said it does not drop below you know 60 degrees out here um, what else here I replaced the little dial timer that I had on here and I put a little digital El Cheapo countdown timer on here those dial timers they don't work well sorry they they wear out in no time flat so I switched to something digital instead um, can't really think of anything else here oh yeah one more you don't have to build a pellet stove if you want to do this you know a person can use just a general uh, barrel stove burning plain old firewood uh, I went this route because I want something that I can light and I feel safe leaving the house and leaving this thing burning. Uh, you could achieve the same results just by using a larger barrel stove that burns firewood uh, because when you think about it, and this is what I found here, this was not uh, any kind of scientific research, but as soon as the water and antifreeze mixture in here reaches a temperature that's 10 degrees above your your fish tank water that's when temperature actually starts transferring from there into there uh, I'm sure there's somebody out there that's an expert in thermodynamics that can explain why that works that way but here's the deal if you have a wood burning stove and you just put enough firewood in there to run it three or four hours you could achieve the same results so don't think that you have to go nuts like I did here uh, making a pellet fed stove that you know mixes oil or in this case I'm experimenting <laughs> with diesel fuel why <laughs> I had a hard time finding oil this month so I'm just using diesel fuel this time it's really clear actually but you don't have to mess with building a pellet stove that's like I said I had my reasons for doing it you really don't have to do that if you just want to use heck even a uh, commercially built pellet stove and uh, put a, a coil in there to capture heat from your, your fire in that you could do that just as easily but that's about it people if there's any other questions please post them as comments rather than in uh, private messages to me because that way everybody benefits from the answer rather than just you so that's about it. Have a good one. We'll see you the next time around.